started playing football at the age of five, uh, in mixed sessions mainly with the boys, I was obviously on the girls playing. Um, and so we found out about some girls specific sessions. From that, uh, went to then go on and play in the South Manchester Girls Football League um, for a couple of clubs and sort of went through the whole journey from being young all the way up to under 16s. Uh, after that, obviously, went on and decided that, you know, football is more than my passion. Went to university and sort of went through all that. And I think it's called Down with the Green. Whilst doing that, I realised I wanted to give back to the game and decided to join the committee of the South Manchester Girls League. You know, So for the South Manchester Girls Football League, I'm the uh, Football Development Officer, so looking at how we can sort of grow the game within the league and looking at how we can get more clubs involved in playing in the league and really ensuring that we have that pathway from really young players from under 8s and 9s all the way up to under 16s. So working with our member clubs to make sure the league is exactly what they want and meeting their needs um, and that the girls are enjoying playing football. So the Women and Girls Working Group is a really exciting opportunity to not just grow the game within the South Manchester Girls League but look at the, the game as a whole across Greater Manchester. Um, it was a really good opportunity to work with like-minded people who just want to ensure that girls football can be the best it can be in Greater Manchester and it was brilliant to be able to work with Manchester FA and find out a little bit more around what their, their plans are for women and girls football going forward. Uh, ambitiously, uh, Women and Girls Working Group is to be known as sort of that go-to group for women and girls football and make sure that we have expertise on the group so that we can really give a good representation and be that voice for women and girls football in Greater Manchester. Um, like I say, when I first started playing football, um, I always had to take part in mixed sessions with boys and I was always the only girl playing in the session. Um, and now, you know, the opportunities that girls have to play football, if they want to play mixed football, that's an option. But again, there's so many options to play girls specific football, which, which weren't there when I was younger. And I think the perception of girls playing football as well has massively changed. You know, it's, it's now really socially acceptable for girls to play football. Whereas I know my mum always comments that when I was younger, walking around the football pitch, you get a few looks and you know, it's a little bit strange for girls to play football, whereas now it's just seen as a norm. In the last few uh, 12 months we've had the uh, coronavirus pandemic and having to stop and sort of suspend a lot of the football that we, we had as a league going forwards. Um, I think after the, the pandemic we had an issue with re-engagement with a few clubs and making sure that clubs felt safe to be able to play in the league again and that football was a safe space for players to come back and play but I think as a, as a committee and as a league we've been able to sort of eradicate that and people know now that you know football is that release for, for for the girls who have been at home for so long and you know it's just really important for them to get back out and enjoy the football again. I think you know obviously we know Greater Manchester and Manchester is brilliant for women and girls football already we know there's so many opportunities for girls to play I think it's just ensuring that people know about them opportunities I think sometimes it's that that hidden gem that hidden secret that you know girls can play football in Greater Manchester so I'm hoping that you know if people can see it on TV and it's sort of that you know you've got to see it to be it so hopefully if people see that and um, they can see the opportunities of women and girls to play football that they'll go out and try and find the, the local club I think being on a committee and being on a voluntary committee gives you so many skills and it's those soft skills and personal skills that sometimes you don't get from courses or you know qualifications. I think you know being able to listen to people and that empathy sometimes to understand you know what is it the clubs need and really understanding you know how can we meet those needs has been a massive thing for me. Um, also, obviously being part of a committee, you've got to make decisions sometimes. And sometimes they're not always easy decisions. So making difficult decisions sometimes definitely a, a skill I've had to learn from being on a committee. But Again, I think, like I say, those, those soft skills and personal skills are something that you, you can't be you can't be taught. And being on a voluntary committee really gives you the opportunity to try try and learn those things on the job. I think again, like I say, when I, I was growing up, you know, there was the England women's team was sort of you know the only sort of role models I had in the game. There weren't many female coaches or referees around at the time, or grassroots players for me to look up to. And, I think that's where a lot of people probably drop out the game, that if they, they can't see that, that next generation and that, that opportunity to play, they think it's not there. Um, so I think definitely having those, those role models and seeing that women can be involved in the game at every different level is going to be massive for, for girls to understand that you know, there is a pathway there for them to continue being involved in the game. I think in 10 years' time it would be great to see every single club in, the, in 
Greater Manchester have some provision for women and girls football, you know, rather than it just being separate clubs all the time. It's great to see, you know, big community clubs that are really in the heart of the communities and have an offer for every single every single child, whether that be, you know, male or female. Um, I think as well, like you say, having the women in every different position is really club. So, you know, where we have a committee, can we make sure we have some female on the committees that really understand the needs of women and girls within, within clubs as well? Um, and I think as well, just like I say, understanding that, you know, women can be involved in any role, you know, don't just think that it's always a man's job. Hopefully having the home advantage and having the crowds behind them will really sort of cheer them up, you know, for a lot of the players, I'm sure it's once in a lifetime opportunity to play in front of, you know, full stadiums like that in England and hopefully again they'll know they're inspiring the next generation of girls and I really sort of try them up for position. I'd say definitely get involved, I'd say play the sport, volunteer in the sport, give back your time. You know, if it is something you enjoy and you've, in, you've loved playing football, then think about how you can give your time back to the game so that the next generation can play. You know, if people hadn't done that for me, then I wouldn't have the opportunities I have. So, um, yeah, just get involved and think about other, other opportunities in football rather than just playing all the time.